Uh, Danny Flexant here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined once again by Olympian and unbeaten professional Chev Clark. Chev, how you doing? I'm very good, Dan. How are you? I'm good. Now, we'll talk in a few minutes about why your name hit the headlines, particularly over the last few days. But let's go back to February because that was your professional debut. Uh, second mm -hmm. round knockout. Very, very good performance. Just what are your reflections on it? Um, my reflections are I did um, what I should have done. I listened to my corner, I prepared well, and um, you guys saw the result. Now back out again, uh, just three months later, or less than three months, I think, May 21st at the mm -hmm. O2, on a really big show as well, South London Derby, of course, in the main event. How excited are you about your second professional outing? I'm very excited because, you know, again, there's going to be people there that weren't able to come and support me when I was on GB. So, you know, that's that's always good. And, um, you know, I think maybe, except from the, the headline show at the O2 last time out, I probably had one of the loudest um, um, coming out. So that was pretty interesting as well. So looking forward to that and just want to crack on, really. Now, before we move on from that May 21st show, I want to ask you for your prediction of how the main event's going to go. Bro, um, I'm not Muhammad Ali, you know. I can't, I can't predict um, that that well. But I think, personally, I think um, it'll be a good, it'll be interesting. That's that's for sure. Um, but you know, I, I think because of the pedigree um, um, through GB and the fact that I've gone through it as well, I think that will put Josh in good stead to. Um, just be ahead, um, not forgetting that Craig's fought at um, world world level before. So um, it'll be a great fight. Everybody will be entertained, but I'm going with Josh. And while we're talking about exciting light heavyweight clashes, we've got one this weekend, of course, as well, between Canelo and Dimitri Bivol. What do you make of that one? That, that's a very good one, man. Um, Canelo's a beast, um, but... Bivol's really good, man. So, again, man, I'm not Muhammad Ali. <laughs> I'm not to read the future, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm the type to go for the underdog. So, I'm going to go for... I'm, I should say Canelo, but I'm going to go for Bivol. I'm going to go for Bivol. All right, that's cool. So, for people out there, if you want to bet on a double... No, no, no. <laughs> Bivol no, no, no. <laughs> B don't take my advice. I know <laughs> nothing about boxing. That's what Jermaine said. <laughs> all right, all right. Now you obviously fought at a very high level as a as an amateur, sorry, and, and as a professional now, at least at the start of your career, you're probably going to be fighting guys who aren't quite in your class. It's fair to say, as you get used to the new style, the longer rounds, and so on. What have you been doing in the gym to kind of bridge that gap? Who have you been sparring with, and what what, what have you been working on? Um, I mean, like, I, I know what you're saying in terms of like, people, um, the class levels, but um, you can only fight what's put in front of you. Yeah. Right? So um, that's what I'm doing. And, you know, just as always, just working on what my strong attributes are and um, monitoring my, my weaknesses. So, you know, um, just working on the basic things, man. You know, I, I'm... I don't, I don't do none of the fancy pads or nothing like that, but I, I do know how to work the basics. And the basics will hold me, me steady um, as I go on and uh, climb the rankings and, you know, eventually become um, one of the greats in the game. And what about on the sparring side? Who have you been kind of moving around with, working with over the last, well, since your debut? Um, I've worked with a, a, a few guys. Um, I've worked with... Um, a guy called Natty Okoengo, if I got his name right. I'm sorry if I didn't. Um, <laughs> I think, I can't remember all the guys' names, but I've, I've been working with a few guys that are good in the pro game. I'm a Southern Area champion. Um, I can't remember his name. I've worked with Chris Billings-Smith, um, Vidal Riley, um, 
Lo- lo- loads of guys, man. So is the only thing kind of separating you from the guys like Chris Billum Smith, who's on the verge of a world title shot now, just getting those longer rounds in, just getting the experience under your belt in the pros? Um, yeah, I think it's just their time in the game, and they've they've had a bit more time in the game. Um, I think I've got a good enough boxing IQ. I, I could do ten rounds today. I'm I'm, I'm that confident. Um, my coach is that confident in me. It's just um, the the process, I suppose. You know, and um, we're we're taking the process as it is. Um, I'll move as quick as I, I'm able to, and um, yeah, good stuff. Now. You've come to prominence over the last few days, particularly because of being linked by your promoter, Eddie Hearn, to Jake Paul, who I'm sure Mm -hmm. most people out there will have heard of. Um, When you saw the clip of Jake claiming he could beat anyone who was 10 and 0 or less um, in Eddie Hearn's stable, before you were actually, you know, named, did you think, yeah, I'll have some of that, you know, I'm I'm 1 and 0, but I'm, I'm, I'm game. Bro, I was asleep when it all happened, if I'm honest. <laughs> <That's> honest. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I've been working so hard on myself and preparing for this fight. Uh, last week was a hard week. And literally, Friday, I got home, yeah? I played played with my little one uh, for like five minutes. Then he got bored, <laughs> left the room. And I was like, no, no, I turned my phone off. I was like, you know what? I don't care who wants to ring turning it off, which is a rare occurrence. Mm. Turned it off. I woke up at 12.30. And my phone was on vibrate, right? Turned it on. For like 30 seconds, we were going, mm, 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 mm. oh, what the hell's going on here? And like, you know, you kind of like sleep, you're like, looked at it. And I was like, I was like, wait, it's about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then that's when I, I saw it. And I was, I just looked at it. I was like, you know what? I'll reply to that in the morning. Um, but like, you know what I mean? It's not a not big deal, man. You know, I've been on... Sorry, that, that was the wrong thing. It's, it's not that it's not a big deal. It's just, I'll, I'll fight him tomorrow. I'll fight him on May 21st, you know. Um, it, you know, he's been in the gym training. So it'd be uh, everybody wants to see. It'd be a good test for him to see what he's learned. It's interesting because... You've worked and plugged away for so long. He's got his fame by a completely different route. But I guess, do you appreciate the fact that by just being linked with him, even if the fight never happens, there'll be people in a different realm than boxing who will now know who you are? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, you're like, um, from a boxing purist point of view, you're like, yo, you know, there's people out here that's working. They, they put the, the, the graft into master their craft and then there's this who, who is this guy just coming into <laughs> fight um, and it, it's kind of like the same for him he's put the craft in, the graft in to master his YouTube sensation and, but we're in that world where like attention's the new commodity so mm. the, the more attention you have the more you can do right so he he's plugging away at that but you know let, let it happen I'm, I'm all for it have you seen much of him um, in the ring? I watch boxers, man. <laughs> Scathing comment. I love it. Um, you said you'd be willing to fight in May 21st, which is your next appearance. Probably unlikely that he's going to want to fight at that short notice, given the amount of kind of profile and build up that would go into it. Mm-hmm. But would you be up for something like, because you see yourself as a serious boxer. He's more of a, a sideshow in boxing, it's fair to say, but brings a lot of publicity, a lot of money as well. Is that something you'd be up for potentially later in the year as well? Of course, yeah. Like at the end of the day, um, it'll be good publicity for myself. Um, but let's let's not get it twisted. But even though, as an athlete and a, and a boxing purist, like we're here to secure our futures and. And also leaving a legacy. So, yeah, I'll take it. And, um, yeah, I'll, I'll represent for the boxing people and, uh, and do a good job. Would but you he's been playing, so we, we can't just, you know what I mean, knock him, right? So, Would you find it at all difficult to get motivated? Because you've trained for massive tournaments, Olympics, World Championships and so on. And then you've got this YouTuber. 
not at the same sort of level, very famous, but not at the same sort of boxing ability level as you or anyone you've boxed. Would you find it difficult to get motivated doing those long days in the gym for him? No, I, I'd be extra motivated. Listen, um, when a soldier goes to war, it doesn't matter what type of war it is, it's war, right? So um, I'm prepared and ready to go. Um, let's go. Would you expect it to last long? <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, as I said, I haven't watched Jake and I, I, he's been in the gym working, right? So, um, again, I'm not Muhammad Ali, I'm not, I can't predict uh, things like that. Um, it might, it might, it might not, it might go up along, along uh, the, uh, the long distance, right? What do you make on the flip side of this of Eddie Hearn picking you out? Because I'm sure you're not the only cruiserweight in his stable with less than 10 fights. He's yeah. chosen you to kind of get that celebrity rub, if you like, from Jake Paul. That, that surely shows that he's got a lot of faith in you. I appreciate that. Um, that's a question you'd have to more ask Eddie Hearn. Um, mm. But what, all I can say is, like, I appreciate it. Um, I've obviously done something that he likes. And um, he, he possibly sees, well, he, he obviously sees that, um, he obviously sees the potential. You know what I mean? But it's just for me to to live up to that and show everybody that I, I am that good and I, you know what I mean? Have you noticed any impact yet on kind of your socials and stuff like that? Are you getting a lot more followers and things now? People are kind of Jake Paul fans, if you like, or YouTube fans are coming over a little bit. I don't know if there is fans, to be fair, because <laughs> I've tried to read everybody's comments and, um, and I try to reply to as many people as I can, um, but I have not seen a comment or I've had my, my inbox is stupid before. Um, I've not read one that says Jake Paul's gonna do a job. It's just like beat this guy, prove this punk, like please for the boxing purist battery, please take the fight. It's just like those are the comments that I'm getting. So you gotta do it. You time. gotta do it. It's what everyone wants. Um, Eddie, listen, you know what you're doing. You know, do the thing. You're the best promoter in the world. Do what the best promoter is meant to do, okay? <laughs> Get me Jake <Jim> Paul. <laughs> Get me Tong Po. Brilliant. Um, really appreciate your time, as always. Look forward to seeing you in the ring on May 21st, whether it's Jake Paul in the opposite corner or someone else. Always a pleasure to watch you perform. It's not May 21st, you know, we can have Fight, fight, fight Camp 2022, right? <laughs> Why not? In the garden. Let's get on.